Welcome back to the second part of my Secret of Evermore strategy guide. In the first video I covered the prehistoric age, so it is now time to move on to Antica. We will finally get some exciting charms to boost your character stats, but we'll also have to deal with some not so exciting dungeon mazes. But don't worry, if you watch this video you will have no problems going through this age while also getting all the important items and spells. So in the end you can enjoy the game and play without chore through Evermore. This time you will start without your dog in a small pirate hideout named Custacia. I love the more wackish pirate vibe of this place, but sadly there is not a whole lot to do. You can exchange your talents for jewels, which is a new currency and find an armor vendor and an inn. Usually I would tell you to not buy anything because you will consistently get new equipment for free, but in this particular instance it is a good idea to buy a full set of arm, head and chest armor. Except for the collar. I will explain the reasoning later. If you need more jewels you can farm them east by defeating the rogue pirates and mad monks, but be careful, the pirates pack quite a punch and are very beefy. In addition you should try to have your spear maxed out and be able to unleash level 2 charge attacks, so farming a little bit might be a good idea. Oh and by the way, the weapon leveling system is also one of the more annoying parts of the game because each time you get a new weapon, you have to level it up again. Leveling up a weapon requires a fixed amount of enemies you have to kill, which is 64 for a weapon to go from level 1 to level 2 and 128 enemies to go from level 2 to level 3. That means that the best way to increase your weapon level is by farming weak enemies that you can easily dispatch and I probably should have told you that when you were still in Prehistoria and had access to Skeletonels or flower enemies. Anyway, there is a monk in Costacia selling an amulet of annihilation for mere 10,000 jewels, which you obviously cannot afford. And even if you could, you should not accept this generous offer. The sly monk himself is kind of surprised when you buy the amulet and throws a chocobo egg on top because he probably feels bad for whipping you off. I'm just mentioning this because of another mechanic the game often uses, which is a tier based item reward system. See, the sly monk gives you a chocobo egg in addition to the amulet if you buy one, which you shouldn't, but if you already have a chocobo egg while buying an amulet, you will get a magic gird instead, and if you also already have that one, you get a wizard coin. And if you have all three of those items, you get three meteorites, which is a rare ingredient only used in one late game formula. Don't worry, there is no need to go for these items here ever, as you will soon have other means of acquiring them. When you have the equipment and you are done farming, or watching the pirates hitting it out in the bar, <laughs> what the fuck, man? go east and meet Blimp in one of the caves. But before that the game switches to your dog, who is gradually jumping out of a fountain and over some water lilies. I didn't realize this at first, but this is probably the way the game wants you to know that your dog now has the ability to jump over small water bodies, which for me always came out of nowhere. Anyway, just one inside the palace to proceed and get back to the nerd. Blimp gives you the crush formula and still sells mud peppers. Make sure to have at least one pepper so you can cast a levitate spell, you will need it later. Many people consider crush to be the best spell to use and level up in this game because it is cheap and effective and will serve you well up until the late game. So feel free to stock up on limestone and wax to cast crush, but have at least 300 jewels left, then go north into the desert. Going through the desert works as follows. You either give the ferryman one amulet of annihilation, which you do not have, so he transports you to the other side, or you simply have to walk north for a while, avoiding enemies and taking constant damage. So take a guess what you have to do next. However, there is a secret alchemist who gives you the stink formula, but it is not necessary to visit him now. He is also one of those guys who gives you a free collar if you talk to him as a dog. So later we have to visit him again anyway. Go to the first oasis, then northeast until you reach a second one, and then straight north to a third one, where he will be waiting. Now here is the reason why it's a good idea to have a weapon at max level. If you have a weapon fully charged by holding the attack button and then also push and hold the 1 button, your charge meter will start at level 1 again and slowly fill up instead of depleting. 
That means you can now run indefinitely by holding both buttons after being fully charged, which is super useful to quickly traverse the desert. Just make sure to avoid touching enemies as you will either get hit or do an evade animation. You can also use the first oasis as a farming spot because here you only face spiders and tumbleweeds and can use the oasis to replenish your hit points. Once you are on the other side, do not go into Nobilia right away. You will start a 15 minute counter in the market after which the Colosseum event triggers and you want to get some things done before. So let me explain a couple of things first. The reason is that inside the Colosseum are a couple of pots for you to loot and three of them provide tier level equipment for head, arm and chest armor. That means that the loot you get from these pots depend on what equipment you already have in your inventory, similar to the additional charms you get by buying an amulet from the slime mog earlier. So if you want to get the best items, you already have to own the weaker versions. Remember when I told you to buy the armor in Crustacea? That's the reason why you already want to have them, because if you didn't, you would get those items as loot inside the Colosseum pots as the lowest tier reward. Now there are three tier levels of equipment in Antica for each slot, so you want to already have the first and second tier when you open the pots to get tier 3 out of them. As I said, tier 1 are the ones you bought in Crustacea, tier 2 can be acquired inside the market and you can even trade for tier 3 in the market, but then you only get some jewels as a reward. An exception is the chest armor where you want to have all three tiers when you open the pot because you will get a charm instead of jewels. So the goal now is to get tier 2 of all armor pieces and in addition also the tier 3 chest armor to get the charm. There is a small whirlwind next to the entrance and if you stand inside for long enough you will get sucked underground where you find 99 wise and spies, which gives you a sweet and fast starting point for trading. I will give you general directions and the order in which you should trade stuff, but the market is big and it's easy to get lost. The general layout is that in the northern half you will often find basic materials and down south are most of the charms and equipment vendors. Another helpful tip is that vendors tend to indicate what they are offering at their stand. Want to find the girl who trades in chicken? It's actually the girl with a lot of chickens around her. Want to find the vendors for tapestries or perfume? You can clearly see those on their stands. Now let's get into trading. First, from the entrance go a little bit south to the first merchant and get 19 beads and 8 perfumes from the vendor next to him. Next, find the chicken girl in the center and get 5 chickens. Afterwards, get a spoon from the merchant in the northwest and 4 tapestries from the vendor in the east. Next we have to reach a secluded area of the market. Exit to the east of the tapestry vendor and then go south and into the next wooden door. Ignore the spider, go left and exit the building again to reach the secluded area. No wonder you get no visitors, idiot, your spot sucks. Wait for two limestone tablets and four jeweled scarabs, then get back to the main market and get two golden jackals from the vendor a little bit north. Now you have all the basic trading materials and can get the charms and equipment. Go to the south area and get a ruby heart, jade disc, moxa stick, sandstone and the silver sheath. Some of these merchants offer different deals for their charms, like one deal with basic materials and another where they trade for another charm. In that case always go for the deal where you give them basic materials like spice, chicken or scarabs. You will also find the equipment merchants in the south for the bronze gauntlet and obsidian helmet, so get those now while you are here. If you talk to this merchant again, they will also offer you a trade for the tier 3 armor pieces, but want a charm as payment. As I said earlier, tier 2 is enough for helmet and arm, so leave it at that. The tier 2 chest armor can be acquired in the center area. After you got all tier 2 armor pieces, get back to the entrance of the market where there is this dude in a green tunic. That's the mad prophet and he gives you some fourth wall breaking doom comments if you repeatedly talk to him. After some talking, you have the opportunity to judge and transfer him, but don't choose any of the three options and instead press Y to end the conversation. He will be thankful and give you a tier based chess reward, which at this point will be the centurion armor, since you already own tier 1 and 2, and that is how you get the tier 3 chest armor also for free. See, everything works out perfectly. 
You will probably have some time left before the event triggers and can use this to trade the silver sheath for the armor polish in the northeast. Don't worry, you will get the sheath back in Gothica. Also, while the silver sheath sounds great in theory, because it increases the damage of your sword weapons, it's actually bugged and the damage boost is always applied to the character, even if you do not have the charm. So it basically does nothing and getting the armor god is much better, because it gives you more defense. Furthermore, there is a vendor in the marketplace trading amulets of annihilation for 30 Ys each and this is the way for you to get those. You can even haggle him down to 3 Ys if you repeat to refuse his offers, but you shouldn't haggle him down below 15 bags because if you do so once, he will refuse to trade with you afterwards. Actually, another bug in the game makes it so that you only pay half of the 15 bags, so get at least one amulet for the ferryman, but feel free to trade for another 4 or 5, you will need those later. Eventually, you are thrown into the Colosseum and now it is time to collect your reward. The pot for the chest armor is in plain sight, giving you the thug's cloak and the hand and helmet pots are in a secret area to the right and should give you the gloves of war and centurion helmet. And that's the best way, at least to my knowledge, to handle the Nobilia marketplace. Next up is the fight against Vigor. You can either fight him fair and square and try to avoid his attacks while hitting him with charge attacks from behind or you can cheese him a little bit. When he's on the right side, quickly run to the very bottom because he will get tracked behind this pillar and cannot charge you. If he moves to the left afterwards, run to the very top where he will be tracked behind another pillar. You simply have to avoid his projectiles and then hit him when he moves on. Wins and repeat for an easy victory and the bone sword, but most importantly reuniting you with your good boy. Next time I will not only show you how to get through the two main dungeons of this age, but also how to look super whipped while doing it. If you made it this far into the video, a like would be highly appreciated and I recently learned that over 80% of my viewers are not subscribed. Look, I cannot guarantee that subscribing to my channel will immediately increase the size of your biceps like this, but I've heard rumors that it actually helps, so you might want to try it. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Later.